Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing off what is, in my opinion, um, what I consider to be the highest level gameplay at which you can play Guild Wars 2, uh, particularly on an Elementalist. Uh, the idea here is me and a friend are duoing, so there's only two people, dungeons of course are designed for five people. Uh, we are trying to duo Ascalon Catacombs, the first path, so not necessarily the most difficult one, but we're trying to duo it as fast as we possibly can can um, and this has led to some really interesting gameplay for me uh, a question I get quite a lot um, as a Guild Wars 2 YouTuber is hey what is there even to do in the game what do you even do anymore and you might have noticed if you've been keeping up to date with my channel a lot of the things I have tended to do the past few months because I am done with so much you know I've got all of the class legendaries for my guy gold isn't so much something I care about anymore um, one of the main things I tend to find myself doing is just making fun for myself what you're watching in this video though it is incredibly fun and very interesting to do there's currently no incentive for it. You get the same amount of gold if you run a dungeon with five people as you do if you run it with just two people, which immediately I think is a mistake. And it also doesn't matter how quickly you complete the runs. The only incentive there is for completing runs very quickly is when the community themselves go out of their way to create these like phenomenal tournaments that go on or just um, you know that very small slice of the community that have that drive for competition even though there's no loot or gold rewards therefore. But here so this was an interesting idea it was how fast can we do a CP1. Uh, there was a run I saw online a long time ago where someone soloed AC Path 1 in about 10 minutes, but there have been substantive changes to the game since then. Like, for example, this Spider Queen here, when she aggroes on us now, uh, they did make a change where she will instantly use her spit ability, or she'll use it in melee anyway, which basically makes that, that old solo that that guy did very, very difficult to pull off, especially considering the Fire Your Great Sword, uh, previously a big part of the PvE meta, has been nerfed too. But I did find it very interesting, not just to see, you know, oh, how quickly can two people blow up the queen like you see there but mostly to see the actual depth that could be available in this game if we would just have the incentive to do this kind of thing if you look at the amount of actions I'm taking uh, at any given moment, it's phenomenal. It's constantly swapping your weapons around to get access to all of your cooldowns. Now consider this is an elementalist with a fair amount of weapons and four achievements per weapon. But you're constantly swapping around so that here, for example, I have my lightning flash on my utility bars. But not just that, I have obsidian flesh so I can be invulnerable to these enemies so that I can blink past them and skip the area. And then for uh, long running sections like you saw at the very beginning of this video, and there will be a repeat in a moment... Um, it's constantly swapping through your weapons so that you can always have available your best mobility skills Like here I've got that skill 4 on my staff which I could use to propel myself forward Now at this particular moment because my partner in this duo is behind me It doesn't matter if I go that much quicker But even just doing this, this little move you see here where I zoom forward That alone is a bunch of different key clicks you have to press together So that your screen doesn't mess up and you end up go flying off in the wrong direction It's one of the most intense things I've ever done in this game game. Uh, not particularly repeatable, I will say that. We did die on the Queen and getting through just that hallway at the start uh, a ridiculous amount of times. We would just spend like an evening playing it and going over and playing it and going over, playing it and going over until eventually we thought that we had, you know, a, a decent enough run. The funny thing about this kind of gameplay too is if there was real reason that the devs gave us to play through stuff quickly is that it's almost infinitely repeatable. Any run, I'm going to show you guys two runs in this video. Um, this run is a particularly good one but uh, you'll see why it's not perfect in a moment. But uh, the other run isn't actually better than this, but at least we managed to finish the dungeon. You see, if ArenaNet was incentivizing us to do this kind of thing, we would have infinite replayability because any run you ever do, you're going to feel like there was something you personally could improve on. And when it comes to playing with other people, like for example, this is a duo, even if you felt like your run was perfect, there may have been something someone else could do. One thing I think that uh, this video hopefully will really show off to a lot of dungeon naysayers it's just how interesting the dungeon experience can be. So here, for example, I could have blinked onto that ledge, but because Kola walked into a tiny AoE I left behind me as I ran past him, the previous boss is still next to me, therefore I was still aggroed on him, therefore I was in combat and I can swap my lightning flash. So instead now I'm going to use it here to blink past a spawn of enemies so that the NPC standing with me won't aggro on them and we can continue to do the run very quickly. You see, so a mistake was made there, but it, uh, we managed to warp it into um, another situation where it was at least vaguely useful to us. 
And you should be seeing there's a fair amount of complexity. There's a lot of dungeon naysayers. There's a lot of people out there who say dungeons are crappy. They're boring. They're just stack, kill, stack, kill, stack, kill. And to those people, I say, yeah, if you run in with five people and you view it very casually, you view it just away every day to get money, it can be very boring. But oh look, the second that ArenaNet changed their reward structure so that people want to do what me and my friend are doing here right now, beyond just the competition of it, suddenly you'll find there is an incredible base game here. And further, you'll notice that very little of this is running around stacking. So far we have, in theory, if you consider it stacking since there's only two of us, we've stacked uh, traditionally once this entire run against the Spider Queen. And that's for very, very good reason. It's so that the ads in the area actually LOS and run next to us rather than pepper us down. And it also puts the Queen against a wall so that our Meteor Showers can do lots of damage. Um, so the traditional idea of what dungeons are, even without changing the dungeons themselves, the enemies that are spawned in them, the tasks you are required to complete without changing any of that, just changing the reward structure and the way that people are incentivized to complete them can radically change your experience of running through these things. Can make it far more engaging, far more difficult, and uh, in theory, to, uh, from what I've experienced here as well, far more fun. But there are problems, uh, and the footage is just rolling into a perfect example here for me. We're at the end of the dungeon, but it's bugged. Um, so maybe this is one reason why the devs don't tend to incentivize this kind of stuff, because at the end of the day, many of these dungeons have a lot of issues within them. And these can range from bugs that will cripple runs, like you're seeing here. We've got to the end, we did everything perfectly, but um, the game didn't detect that we had come here and it wants us to be somewhere else so the boss didn't spawn. This, uh, this dungeon is completely broken now. Either it will be stuff like this, or it will be um, more severe stuff in arena net size, I'd suppose, like exploits. Like people being able to blink out of dungeons and um, ultimately skip to the end. So there are certain things that need to be addressed in the dungeons. I certainly don't put the argument forward to you guys right now that um, they could just change the rewards straight away and leave the rest of the dungeons completely untouched. What I'm trying to say, though, is with minimal effort actually fixing what is largely broken in the dungeons by having playtesters of their own who do test the game to its limits like you're seeing here and iron those bugs out the devs don't actually have to do that much they just have to change the way rewards are given smartly and um, there was some recent news i'll probably do a, uh, a separate video on it um, later on in the week how um, arena has actually hired a raid designer for the company very recently. There's actually uh, a discussion on the forums as well about raids, and it certainly looks like something that ArenaNet are interested in. It's something I'll say straight away I'm excited about, but I also wonder why they have left dungeons in the state they've been for so long. Dungeons are clearly what your average MMO player considers to be the pinnacle of endgame. It's what most people think is all that matters, and yet ArenaNet dissolved their dungeon team so early after launch. I actually don't think their main focus should be making new dungeon paths, I think it, they, it should be just taking small intelligent changes to the current paths to encourage people to play back through them in these kinds of ways. What I'm doing right now feels nothing like a standard dungeon run. It feels new, and this wasn't because they may have spent, you know, weeks of effort and development resources making a new path. It's because I decided, hey, let's try this out for fun. What if it's not just for fun in the future? What if it's actually um, for a real reason? You know, because there are leaderboards. Because there are leaderboards that not only recognize the time you get through these paths, but give you more money if you're at the top of those leaderboards at the end of the day, at the end of the week at the end of the quarter and it maybe they even recognize the amount of players you're in that dungeon with I remember very early pre-launch interviews in which the devs talked about how some dungeons could be theoretically soloed. Why aren't people tapping into this? Why aren't they letting people try it? Um, there is real support here. You'll notice in some of this, I think later on in this run I'm doing right now, here I messed up and cast my ice bow a little bit early. You'll watch me, um, even as my friend runs by through a load of enemies, he has no swiftness. I actually take the effort to go and give him that swiftness. These aren't experiences you normally have in Guild Wars 2, and I think we're missing out. Um, so this run, this second run you'll see, this is actually our fastest time, I'll probably have a timestamp on here, this was the speed clear if you like, this is our official record. But you know, mistakes were made, the uh, cave troll spawned at a horrible spot there and ended up fearing me into the water. And stuff like this happens a lot. The queen, uh, all you guys are going to see from this video, is us just nuking her down twice. Um, most runs would be run in there, try and kill the queen. Oh wait, no, one tiny little thing messed up. I posted a video uh, just on Twitter, like a two-minute video, of one of our typical runs where a single little spider stayed alive. 
And because that little spider stayed alive, I stayed in combat. And then so, because I was in combat, I couldn't swap to my focus. And then I couldn't get through the hallway. So many of these runs, small things can mess up. Like here, me miscasting my ice bow. And they cause you to restart it. That kind of thing can make this experience rather frustrating. But also, it doesn't have to be the way people tackle this if this was uh, a root arena net went down. They're so anti-competition, it seems, in PvE. They're so against any of these features that would allow the community to almost give itself content because they're always pushing for better times. They're so scared of it, they wanted the competition only in World vs. World. And uh, in many ways, it's crippled the game. For what little frustration there was doing this where we would mess up every now and then, there was way more to be gained from the fun of actually completing one of these runs successfully and seeing your theories about the best way to do it paying off. But uh, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Let me uh, demonstrate to you guys. Right now you'll see I'm running to the next area of the dungeon, but my friend is just waiting at the uh, bottom of the map in the previous room we were at. Why is he doing that? Well, because by doing that he keeps the NPC with him. And now if you watch very closely, he'll waypoint away and then immediately waypoint back to where he originally was. By doing that, the NPC that was stood next to him just snapped to my location. And now the NPC has just done the entire run, but without aggroing and stuff in the meantime. That opens this gate so that I can run through. This also means that my friend, while I was doing this run, could go into another area and collect the first scepter piece, if you guys are familiar with this run. These splits are really interesting to me. Now, as I'm collecting these five um, objects, I've got a certain amount of time to kill to do this while the NPC is rolling through his dialogue. My friend is now making the run past Cola because he's going to try and get to the NPC who is waiting in a completely different room so that once I've collected these five fragments he can instantly talk to him and trigger the waypoint for me to go back into the room. Um, at the very start of the dungeon I run on ahead and clear all the little spiders out of the room as fast as possible while he stays behind triggering a cutscene and making sure we can select our path. These splits are really interesting and another big thing I think uh, ArenaNet made mistakes with with their dungeons. Splits are some of the most interesting gameplay you can have that that doing duos and really quick runs can incentivize, but largely in regular dungeons, it's all five people running around at all times, and it contributes to this perception that all the dungeons are is just everyone DPSing next to one another, and rather than actually supporting each other, and rather than having actual roles. This isn't the Holy Trinity, but me and my friend here do have very different roles. His role is usually the, the person who's staying back and is triggering a lot of the stuff to make the dungeon flow, while I'm trying to get to the next area very quickly and clear the way, right? You don't need the Trinity to feel like you're supporting one another in these ways and it's uh it's such a shame to me that all of this depth is here all of this is available and uh people miss out on it because at the end of the day no one wants to do anything unless they get the loot and um, so here you'll notice the second run i'm showing off did go a, a fair bit slower in many ways enemies here crippling me so i've got to cleanse that in some way earlier i got caught in combat i ice bowed earlier i got fo uh, feared off of the wall by the troll at one point there's a lot of areas for improvement and this is just more incentive for us to perhaps, if we hadn't ran it so much, come back in and try again. At least this time, on this run, uh, the damn thing didn't bug out. So here we are, we're swapping our food around. We're trying to make sure we've got the best stuff we can to uh, blow up this final boss. And it is fun. It is impressive to clear stuff that was originally designed with five people in mind. And realize that just by the two of us really thinking about what we're doing and when. So he's blocking this guy here. I have a trait that means I do 20% more damage while someone's stunned. So I make sure my biggest attacks are going off while he's stunned. Then I drop um, uh, another AoE that stacks lots of vulnerability. So that now that his big attacks are rolling... While while uh, the boss has got loads of vulnerability on him. We stand together so that we blast might together. So that we give fury to one another. And um, you know try and burn down the boss as fast as possible. This stuff was really fascinating. Um, I, get, I didn't really want to make a huge point out of the video. Uh, perhaps it will be some interesting discussion for us though in the comments about the state of dungeons. I hope ArenaNet don't ignore them. Uh, but this is just what I've been doing lately in game. If you guys are interested in maybe seeing some more of these weird like duo speed clears. Let me know. You might post some more. We're thinking of maybe going to CM next. Um, but yeah, that's about it guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time